Hello, my lovely Sages, and a very warm welcome to your April 2023 horoscope forecast. This month, we've got Mercury going retrograde and we've got an eclipse. So it's an eventful month in many ways. Let me break it down for you personally. On the fourth of the month, Mercury will go into your sixth house and join Venus and Uranus. So this is an opportunity for studying, for learning something new, especially connected with your work in some way or a way in which you can serve or help more. It's an opportunity for you to think about ways in which you might want to contribute, to volunteer, maybe with animals, maybe with growing things, but something that makes you feel as though you're part of a wider community. It's also going to be an opportunity for um, a leap forward in your physical health, your vitality, your energy levels. Although it will take some, possibly some changing of your mental patterns. What are you telling yourself about your physical body and what needs to change so that you feel better and brighter and fitter? But more about that when I get onto the Mercury retrograde. On the 6th of the month, we've got a full moon in your 11th house. So wherever a full moon falls, it's shining a light on that life area that may need some changes and adjustments. So in the 11th house, this has to do with your friends and your social circle. Are you feeling happy? with the people that you are mixing with? Are they a good influence? Do you feel uplifted? Do you feel as though you're uplifting them? Or are you feeling drained? And if so, what needs to change? Do you need to move away from a certain group or a certain person in order to really get your equilibri equilibrium and your balance back again? Have you got enough social life? Have you got too much? Again, the moon, full moon is just uh, nudging you to find the right balance for you at this time in your life. And it can be an opportunity for making new friends uh, online and offline. Now, on the 12th of the month, we've got Venus coming into your seventh house of relationships, which is wonderful. Venus in that house makes you popular. It can bring romance. It can bring love. It can bring money. It can bring a new friendship. And uh, generally, it's just a really great placement to have Venus. Uh, it means that you can bring peace and harmony into all your relationships. On the 20th of the month, we've got a solar eclipse happening here in your fifth house. This is lovely, along with Jupiter and the sun in the fifth. And remember that eclipse energies last for up to six months afterwards. So this can bring romance, can bring love again. It's this fifth house. It can also trigger your own business, your own launching of something that you love, uh, a big impetus for your creativity, being creative uh, with what it is that you want to express that's hidden inside of you, being like a child discovering new things that you didn't know you could do and suddenly you're enjoying something that uh, you really didn't know. So it's exploring the unknown and enjoying that journey because that's what romance is like, isn't it? You meet somebody and you, you think, wow, this person's amazing, but you don't know them and you want more. But this is also about the parts of you that you don't know that you're digging up more. So this can be a wonderful, exciting journey and a romance, if you like, with yourself. On the 21st of the month, the sun will come into this sixth house. And on the 22nd, Mercury will go retrograde until May 15th. So this is not the time during the Mercury retrograde in the sixth necessarily to go after new work and new positions but it is a good time where things can complete. If you had an interview, there may be a completion, there may be an acceptance. It, so whatever you've started before the retrograde can complete after the retrograde. 
you might be doing some deep thinking about your health and your well-being and how can you really reach the optimum energy levels. So you might have some great ideas that you can then implement once Mercury goes direct in the middle of May. Oh dear, let me move it again. Sorry, Mars. Mars is in your eighth house all month. Back one, it's all this retrograde energy. And so there's a good time for getting anything done to do with taxes, insurance, investments, uh, finances generally, get things done, move forward, be proactive. So there you have it, my lovely Sagis. I wish you a wonderful month. And I thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and subbing. Bye for now.